Hi, I'm Andrew, Andrew Martin from Asia Online Publishing Group, cybersecurityasean.com. We're here at Tech Week Singapore, uh, and I am very happy to have with me Nikki Chu, who is the, I think you're the GM, aren't you, for Asia yeah. and Japan uh, for a company called Devo. Um, so um, some people may know you, but others may not. So before I would say most one, <laughs> yeah. So, so before we go into a few questions, maybe you can just give us a, a really quick overview of who is Devo. Yeah. So um, Devo is um, basically a, a cybersecurity company. We yeah. provide a platform um, normally used in what we call security operation centers. Yeah. Right. So um, we're headquartered in um, in Boston, on Cambridge, mm -hmm. uh, in the US. Um, so we. We are one of those new generation, everybody calls themselves some new generation, mm -hmm. quite cliche, but a, a new generation of uh, threat detection and incident response platform. Yeah. So typically you know it as SIEM and SOAR and a whole bunch of combination of different technologies. Yeah. We kind of brought them all together in one single platform. Okay, excellent. So, and I know Boston well, especially when it's cold there. Um, so, uh, you know, you, you mentioned Seam and Soar and stuff, and obviously there's a lot of players in that space. Yeah. And, and you're, uh, well, I don't know how new you are, but as a, as a brand, it's fairly new to me. Yeah. Um, but um, is there anything like uh, one or uh, uh, one specific point or something very unique to you guys that you would want people to know that differentiates you from? all those other players in that space? Well, it's a lot of people who claim to be that, and once you start doing yeah. the deep dive, um, you start to see the difference. But where we kind of differentiate ourselves and we pride ourselves is that we were designed from ground up uh, for today's uh, digital, um, I would say digital workloads, right? Okay. A lot of the um, organizations are moving into a digital world, moving more and more of their channels yeah. uh, into the uh, and into digital, right? And, and because of that, um, the volume of, of data, the volume of, um, I would say, the, the surface that you expose yourself to becomes mm. a lot larger. So a lot of traditional technologies were not built for that. They were built for the on-prem world. Uh, yeah. you know. So we're built from ground up for the, you know, for the cloud world. Yeah. Um, we're cloud native. Uh, we're, and the other thing that we've done is, in, in the past, it used to be a variety of different technologies that you combine together. Yeah. Uh, we've kind of built this out to be an integrated platform. Yeah. So that you don't have to worry. I mean, in the past, like you used to carry a, a mobile phone and a, a computer to serve the internet, yeah. an iPod for music, like when yeah. Apple first launched the iPhone, and now yeah. everyone's just have a device that has everything in it. Great. So this yeah, is yeah. why we are at this uh, kind of turning point in yeah. the industry where it's like combining all the different functionalities into one single platform. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I understand. And, um, but c coming back to what you were saying, you know, you built from the ground up for today's kind of uh, environment and um, the, the cloud native world, you know, one of the things we see there is it's uh, so complex, so many components, so many things that you have to monitor. So uh, something that I've heard time and time again, increasingly these days is, is with the amount of things you're monitoring, mm -hmm. people get so many security alerts. So I'm hearing people talk about alert fatigue and mm -hmm. you're obviously in the business of keeping people informed about what's going wrong. So do you also find that, that, that people do suffer with this alert fatigue? And, and what do you guys do about that to kind of solve that problem? Absolutely, there are a couple of things, right? Um, first of all, um, to reduce the alert fatigue in the past, people say, oh, let's limit the amount of data that we're ingesting. Uh, yeah. Let's limit the amount of logs that we're analyzing because yeah. then you know, at least we kind of keep it manageable, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and performance was an issue, right? Yeah. Uh, you couldn't query and then uh, some organizations would say, oh, we only want to store 90 days of data. Because yeah. if we store any more than that, it's going to be expensive, it's going to slow down the system, a whole bunch of other stuff, right? And then we only, take, we only want to monitor these few things. Yeah. But you can't really choose, right? Because you don't know where the exactly enemy, you're right. You don't right, know where yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. the the threat actor is going to attack. Yeah. So the one thing yeah. you drop could be the one thing. Absolutely. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. So and the other part of it is also if you look at um, if you look at some of the reports by large organizations, they say the average time for for a, 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 I would say an attack is about to, to detect an attack is about two hundred plus days. To some reports put it two hundred seven. Some reports put it a little bit more. Yeah. It's, in the in the ballpark of 200 over days, yeah. right? Um, and if you only keep data for 90 days, you can't really kind of detect, you know, yeah, anomalies yeah. and stuff like that because usually they will start probing and how attacks happen, right? They will yeah. start probing your know, defenses and so on. So those are some of the shortcomings in the traditional methods, methods yeah. right? So what we say, hey, 
how do we create a platform that allows you to keep data for a much longer period of time, like mm -hmm. 400 days, like over a year? Yeah. Uh, how do you, again, ensure that um, it is fast when you query that data mm -hmm. and it turns results in seconds and not minutes or hours, right? So those are some of the things that we're trying to do. And in addition to that, once you have that volume of data, how do we, how do you ensure that you are getting, ingesting the right kind of data, you're taking the right kind of data? So we have like frameworks to say, hey, for this kind of attack, you need this kind of data. Yeah. For this kind of attack, you need, and this is based on the MITRE attack framework. Yeah. Right? And then it will tell you what's missing, what are you not collecting, and what are the things that you don't really need to collect. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So at least you have a, a more informed way of, you know, um, kind of understanding what data to collect. And once you have that, uh, you ingest those data. When the alerts come out, we use a combination of AI and ML technologies mm -hmm. to kind of identify and group them and say, hey, this are uh, kind of the same and this is what you did in the past. Mm. We create a case based on that rather than you got 10 alerts to solve. So yeah. we'll do the correlation for you. Uh, so those are some of the things that we're trying to do within mm. or we've done in the platform to try to alleviate some of the fatigue in, yeah. in the security operations center. Okay, excellent. And um, you, know, you, you mentioned a little about AI there mm. and um, mm. you know, we find that everyone is now telling us we use AI. Uh, so I did get a hint of what you're using it for based on your last question, mm -hmm. but can you go a little bit deeper in terms of, you know, rather, because we look on your website and we see, you know, the, you know leveraging AI, but h how do you use AI to truly benefit your customers? Well, a couple of ways, right? Yeah. I think ultimately the, the goal is to what something called what, what we call the autonomous SOC, right? Yeah. Um, to try to automate as much uh, of the processes and the, the work within the SOC. Yeah. Uh, as much as possible. Yeah. Um, because the problem is there's so much alerts, for example. How do yeah. we then automate that? How do we group those alerts together? How do we classify those alerts, rank those alerts, and say what's important, what's probably noise? Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, some of the actions that you take, some of the, uh, I would say, the, the, the incident, the, run, the, the, the playbooks that you run, mm -hmm. that are associated with some of those cases, yeah. incidents, you can say, hey, you know, if you didn't done this before, this looks like the same thing. Do you want to do the same thing again? Yeah. So, automating some of the stuff. So that's where the AI comes in, you know, helping you to kind of narrow down and I would say prioritize, yeah. uh, reduce the noise and automate uh, some of the tasks. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it doesn't yeah. mean you eliminate everyone, but you use the people that you have to do more high level stuff because we all know there's a severe shortage yeah, of security ab absolutely. professionals, right? Yeah, absolutely. So we yeah. want to try to yeah. uh, reduce the, the, what we call the level ones, yeah. and possibly some of the level two function, uh, function tasks that you're doing yeah. in the security operation centers. Okay, excellent. So thanks for that. So um, I, I guess we've got you know, a very brief or, or surface level overview into what Devo is, and I appreciate you taking the time to go through that with us. Um, we are at, at Tech Week uh, Singapore, mm -hmm. so um, just wondered for you and your team, what are your aims, what are you hoping to achieve by being here for this week? What we're hoping to achieve is, uh, you know, um, we believe we have a good technology out yeah. there, a uh, good platform, but the, the platform is just one thing, right? So yeah. we want to, a lot of people like, who goes like, who's Devo, right? So yeah. um, as with all new technologies, we need to make ourselves known yeah. and our value proposition, right? Because sometimes there's a lot of noise. Everyone's going to tell you, sing the same message. Yeah. If yeah. the message resonates, everyone's going to say, oh, we do that too, and we do that too. Yeah. So the, the proof is always uh, in, in the pudding, as you say, right? you, you, you got to kind of go out there, talk to people, demonstrate how we're different, how we can really add value mm -hmm. uh, to our clients. And what we hope is, you know, using this as a forum, as a platform, for us to reach out to potential, um, you know, clients who mm -hmm. think that our platform might be something that will help them in achieving their uh, security goals, right? Yeah. Like tr it, helping them do their things better, and, uh, faster, in a more cost-effective way. Excellent, excellent. So, well, hopefully, uh, talking to us will help you with that goal as I well of so getting too. that message out oh, there. Oh, thank you. And thank I you. Uh, hope that the rest of the week goes really well for you. And uh, again, thanks so much for thank you very uh, much. coming and it's telling us a bit more about Devo. Thank you. Thanks.